right so now we know that p orbitals right p orbitals from magnetic quantum number have have three orientations because m is 3 right for p orbitals so we have three or orientations one orientation would be towards x axis right towards x axis so this kind of dumbbell shape orbital one would be towards x axis right one would be in this direction other would be in this direction right other would be along y axis and the third would be along z axis right these are three orientations and all these three orientations will have equal energy that is why we call these as degenerate orbitals right so these are important things for p orbitals you need to understand it based on the quantum numbers right if the value of l is 0 is 1 for p orbitals that means the orientations which is given by magnetic quantum number would be 2l plus 1 right 2l plus 1 means you have three orientations plus 1 0 and minus 1 right which would be directed towards three coordinate axis x axis y axis and z axis right and all these orbitals right or all these three different orientations would be having same energy that is why we call these as degenerate orbitals right and for the nodes for the nodes in this case 2p orbital has no node 3p orbital has one node and 4p has two nodes right so this is it for just remember one thing what is the shape of the p orbitals shape of the p orbitals is dumbbell shape let's quickly revise this shape of the p orbitals would be dumbbell shape when i say dumbbell shape how we reached at this conclusion this means that when we draw electron cloud or the probability of locating p electrons around the nucleus i will get electron cloud right and the shape of the electron cloud would be dumbbell shape right and how we draw these this, this dumbbell shape electron cloud using psi square psi square which represents the probability density of finding an electron all electron clouds would be constructed using the value of psi square around the nucleus right so dumbbell shape node there would be one node this dumb in this dumbbell shape one lobe of this dumbbell shape would be on one side of the nucleus and the other would be in the opposite side of the nucleus right and the probability of finding an electron would be same in both the lobes right and these are three orientations like we have calculated given by magnetic quantum number px py pz all are degenerate orbitals right now let's quickly talk about d orbitals right we know that d orbitals there are 5 d orbitals right when we say 5 d orbitals it means 5 orientations right 5 orientations remember one thing when i say one s orbital one one uh, there is only one s orbital which is spherical in shape that means the magnetic quantum number represents the orientation which represents the orientation and when i say only one s orbital that means one orientation right and using magnetic quantum number we have seen that that the orbitals for uh, for p orbital right the the orientation of these p orbitals is 3 because the magnetic quantum number was 3 right that means three orientations for p electrons one along x axis one along y axis one along z axis and the regions the probable regions that you draw that is the electron clouds that you will draw in three dimensional space would be one along x axis one would be along z axis one would be along x axis x y and z axis i'm sorry right now for d orbitals let's see about what about d orbitals on the same lines we will just understand d orbitals d orbitals would be for d orbitals we have l is equals to 2 right that is azimuthal quantum number would be 
to right so azimuthal quantum number 2 means m would be having value plus 2 to minus 2 right l would be azimuthal quantum number is 2 for d orbital right so m would be plus 2 to minus 2 right that means plus 2 plus 1 0 plus 1 uh, let's I'm sorry let's say it as minus right it would be minus 2 to plus 2 right and this is minus 2 minus 1 0 plus 1 plus 2 how, how we know that it has 5 values m is equals to 2l plus 1 right l is 2 2 into 2 plus 1 is equals to 5 so we have 5 orbitals or magnetic quantum represents orientations right and these orbitals are nothing but different orientations in space right so we have value of m as 5 that means we have 5 different orientations for d orbitals in space right so 5 different orientations if you want to draw that means if i try to find electrons for some electrons were d electrons that are in electrons that are in d orbitals if I draw similar electron clouds using the value of psi square, right, I will get five probable region where the probability of finding the electron would be maximum, right, for d electrons. And remember one thing, as you move away from the nucleus to higher shells, the energy and the shapes of these orbitals will, energy and the size, I'm sorry, energy and size of the orbitals will keep on increasing, the shape will remain same. Right, so we have five orbitals for d electrons. Let's quickly draw these d orbitals. It would be, it would be like this. One is, it's y and x. Right, y and x. It would be like this. The other would be this is remember this is y axis this is x axis right the other would be between z and y axis right z axis y axis similar shape right similarly other is your x and y axis right then the other would be z x axis z x axis it would again be same Right, then the fifth one would be as we said you have five orientations uh, the third one one is along between x and y axis right and one is along z x x between z and x right and the other is between y and x I'm sorry we have uh, drawn two along y and x this this is not I'm sorry y and x we have drawn two so it would be one is uh, let me just try it again right one is between y x the other is between z x the third is between the third is between z x this is between z and y this orbital is between z and y the third is between z and x it would be like this right and the third would be along x and y axis 
right it would be this is your y this is your x right and it would be given by x square minus y square right and fifth one would be would be directed towards z axis and would be given by is given as z x z square right it would be like this given by z square so these are we call these three shapes as clover leaf shape right these three four i'm sorry this x square minus y square this one it means z x this is this is z x this is z y and this is y x when i say y x or x y that means these lobes are between x and y axis and these lobes are between z and y axis right and the lobes for d we call it as d z x d z y and d x y right when i say x y or y z or z x that means the lobes it is between these two coordinate axis for z y the lobes is between z and y z and y right when i say x square minus y square this is represented as d x square minus y square that means the lobes are directed towards x and y axis when i say d z square that means the lobes are directed towards y axis right this has a different shape we call this as donut shape orbital the z d z square has different shape from these four the shape is donut shape right so these are the five orbitals just remember that when i say dx that means dxy that means the lobes of the d orbital would be between x and y right when i say z square the lobe is towards directed towards z axis right and when i say when i say x square minus y square lobes are directed towards x axis and y axis right it's important these are the some shapes of these orbitals right now there are 5d orbitals and only the dz square has donut shaped electron cloud when i say dz square is donut shaped that means the electron cloud is donut shaped right and when we say clover leaf that means the four orbitals have clover leaf or clover leaf shapes right and number of nodes for d electrons or for i'm sorry the for d orbitals would be given by n minus l minus n minus l minus y n minus l n minus l minus y this is number of nodes right now there is one thing that we talked about we said that here that the probability of finding an electron is 90% in the orbitals it's not i we never say it's 100% right why we never say that it's 100% what could be the reason for this right and there is something known as boundary surface diagrams that we will understand now boundary surface diagrams right. what are these boundary surface diagrams these boundary surface diagrams represents these electron clouds only right and we say what we mean is that we say that these uh, these uh, boundary surface diagrams right for the electron clouds do not have sharp boundaries right they do not have these boundary surface diagrams are diagrams these are what these are diagrams for these electron clouds whether for s orbital spherical shape dumbbell shape right clover leaf shape donut shaped whatever whatever diagram we are drawing electron cloud diagram we are drawing for different orbitals we never draw the definite boundaries for these orbitals for these electron clouds what could be the reason that we will that we never draw we 
that we never draw definite boundaries for elect for electron clouds like like i will never draw it like this but i will draw it like this right like this these dots represents the probability of finding an electron i might draw like this right one dot one dot far away from the nucleus right maybe three dots only far away from the nucleus so this doesn't represents the definite boundary like this right why because the value of psi square is never zero right when we say that the value of psi square that is probability density of finding an electron is never equal to zero right that means that means we cannot draw these this definite diagram i'm sorry this definite boundary diagram right where the electron probability is 100% when i say i will draw this this kind of a diagram where i may draw, draw four dots right away from the nucleus that means four dots right the or less number of dots that represents very less probability of finding an electron far from the nucleus right so there can not be a definite boundary where the probability of finding and within which the probability of finding an electron is 100% why because psi square can never be zero right it will always has some value even if it is far away from the nucleus right so if i draw this kind of a diagram definite boundary diagram that means i'm limiting the value of psi square to to this region right and out out outside this region the value of psi square is zero but the value of psi square is also positive is always positive can never be zero right so we cannot draw definite these kind of diagrams right so the probability of this concludes that the probability of finding an electron is always something even if it is far from the nucleus that is why we don't have definite boundary surface diagrams or definite definite boundary diagrams right we do not draw definite boundary diagrams within which the probability of finding an electron is 100% it is always 90% right 90% it's always it it can always have some values even if it is far away from the nucleus right so i hope all this is clear to you just understand what is what are boundary surface diagrams and why we say this is important that the probability of finding an electron is always 90% within the orbital right because the value of psi square can never be equal to 0 it will always have some value even if it if, even if it is away from the or far away from the nucleus that is why we always use 90% not 100% right i hope all this is clear to you thanks